for a free expansion process, we're talking about a process that by definition, free expansion means expansion against no opposing force. So that means if we know that work is equal to negative F times the change in height and if the force is zero then for this process work is equal to zero and this is always the case anytime we have um, a case where we're talking about free expansion in any free expansion process there is no work done there is no force so there is no motion against the opposing force because there is no force so therefore uh, for free expansion processes work is equal to zero. So we just saw how uh, we just derived the equation that we use for calculating um, the work done in an expansion against constant external pressure and that was W is equal to negative P external times delta V or same thing as negative P external dV. And so this, the time when we know that, we're going to, that we need to use this equation in a problem is when we are told that we're talking about a scenario where we have a constant external pressure. So anytime we see constant external pressure, we'll know that this is the equation we use versus the one that I'm about to describe next. The last scenario that we're going to look at is for a type of expansion that we call a reversible expansion. Now, a reversible expansion is an expansion that takes place and generates a small enough change that the system can be easily restored to its original condition. So, basically, if I have an expansion that's reversible, versus an expansion that's not irreversible. Let me see if I can give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say we have a process that starts out from this initial state. If the process is reversible, such a small change that would, would occur that a very small counteracting force or change could take place that could restore the system to its original condition. So you're talking about such small changes in a reversible system that it could be very easily restored to its original state. Irreversible changes on the other hand are those changes that take place so rapidly or so abruptly that no small change, if we try to take the system back using a small change like the one we see here this small change would not be able to restore the system back to its initial state so that is by definition what we mean when we talk about a reversible system so let's look at how we derive the equation that we use to um, calculate work for a reversible expansion or a reversible compression. So let me erase this. And we'll get started looking at that derivation. 
So we know that our basic definition of work that we derived earlier is that the change in work is equal to negative external pressure times change in volume. Okay, so integrating over this in terms of a reversible system gives us slightly different information. In a reversible system, we said that, for instance, if we have a cylinder and inside its contents contain, is contained, inside the cylinder, the contents can freely expand against the external pressure of the atmosphere. We said that in a reversible system, the change can be so small that that can be very, very easily overcome. So therefore, because by its very definition, a reversible system means that we're talking about very, very small changes, then we can take as an assumption that the pressure inside the system is approximately equal to the pressure outside the system or the external pressure. So the P means pressure inside the system and the P external means pressure outside the system which we can pretty much know is the same thing as the pressure inside the system for a reversible process. So by doing that, we know that inside a system, we can easily calculate P because P is equal to NRT over V for a system. So therefore, we can replace this P with pressure internal. Sorry, I'm getting a little carried away with my <clears throat> combining equations here. Oops. All right, and so when we do that and substitute this P here, we end up with negative NRT over V times dV so let's go ahead and integrate this one which simply will just leave us with W so W will be equal to and there are a few things on this side that we know are constant so the number of moles in the system do not change the gas constant is of course constant. This is a constant temperature process. So those three variables do not change. So therefore we can bring them outside the integral and have NRT times the integral of dV divided by V from the initial to the final. When we solve this integral the solution to the integral is ln of v. So distributing that from the initial to final state, we end up with ln v final minus ln v initial. And we know um, that when you subtract a natural log, it is the same thing as taking, dividing it. So let me write this a little bit better. Palette is coming up. All right. So this is the same thing 
is that so our final equation for work in a reversible expansion of a gas is negative nRT times the natural log of V final over V initial. The key word that you're going to be looking for to cue you in to let you know that you're talking about a process that um, is reversible. Well, a reversible pro is what I'm trying to say is that in your problem, when you see the keyword reversible, you'll know that if you're talking about a reversible expansion, you need to use this equation.